guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jessica, the Furry Family Coach. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And we are continuing the beginner dog training series with the third video on leash walking, loose leash walking specifically. In the uh, beginner dog training series, we have done, gosh, this might be like 18, 19, 20 videos so far. There are only a few more to go. If you are new to the beginner dog training series playlist, make sure to check the description below. I do have a link to the playlist so you can start from the beginning and work with your dog all the way through. Also, if you are new to my channel, if you look right down there and that subscribe button is red, go ahead and click it, turn it gray. When you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video. So let's get right into this video. This is the third part of the loose leash training and the final part of loose leash training. So in the first video, we talked about how it all starts inside of the home and what we did to train with our dog inside of the home. If you missed that video, again, check the description for the link to the beginner dog training series playlist. In the second part of the loose leash training <laughs> videos that we did in the beginner dog training series, we took that outside, but just in your home, still in your the vicinity of your home. So we were in the backyard or maybe the front yard or a courtyard if you live in an apartment, a driveway, that kind of thing. So we're still staying really close to home, but moving those same training techniques out outside of the house. Now, that was probably one of the most difficult things you've done to date because moving outside brings so many distractions for your dog. So definitely let me know in the comments below how that went for you. I would love to know. And if you haven't already, make sure you join the group. That link is also in the description. Join the group so you can post pictures and videos of your dog, help other pet parents. There are thousands of other pet parents in the group waiting for you to join and post your questions. If maybe you're struggling with something with your dog, post questions. Other pet parents are in the group waiting to help you. I'm in the group waiting to help you. So let me know what is going on with you and your dog. You can also post a comment below this video in the comment section. Let me know what drew you to this video. Are you working with your dog? What kind of dog do you have? How old is your dog? Let me know what's going on. I would love to hear from you. So in this third part of loose leash training, we're actually gonna go for a walk, a training walk with our dog. So like I said in the other videos, don't stop walking your dog just because you're training. Still walk your dog. Just understand that walks are not gonna be perfect yet because we haven't trained with our dog what, what we expect of them in a walk. This is also a good time for me to interject that there are a couple of different kinds of walks. There are structured walks and there are non-structured walks. And having a balance of both is really gonna be key for you and your dog. So with a non-structured walk, we let our dog sniff. We don't necessarily let them pull. That's not the goal. That's not something we really want our dogs doing, but we can let them enjoy their environment. We can let them sniff things and, and explore the, the new environment. Even if it's not a new environment, there are gonna be new smells all the time. This is how your dog interacts with the world and it's really important to let them do that. Dogs really do see the world through their noses, so it is incredibly important that we do give them time to smell and get accustomed and used to whatever new environment we're bringing them in, or even if it's just on your street, there are new smells all the time. So that's another really key thing to training, especially when you're moving outside, is to give your dog time to smell all those smells and become used to the, the new environment. This will actually calm your dog down to let them get this out of their system before you start training. And it's no different here in the loose leash walking. When we go out for our, a training walk, I'm gonna let Kim, my dog, I'm gonna let her walk around and sniff all the things she wants to sniff. Of course, I'm not gonna let her pull, but I'm gonna let her sniff all the things she wants to sniff and be become comfortable. The best way I have found to figure out if your dog has switched from oh my gosh, there's so much going on, I need to figure out and smell and see what's going on to, okay, I can pay attention to you now, is if they'll take a treat. So you'll see when, in the video clips that I'm gonna insert over this video, when we go out for a walk, I'm gonna let her start sniffing and, and smell all the smells and do everything she wants to do, in reason, I'm not gonna let her pull, I'm not gonna let her walk in the middle of the street, but I'm gonna let her do all these things to 
to calm her brain and become more comfortable with her environment. And once I once she can take a treat from me, then I know that she's in a position where I can actually work with her and train with her. So that's going to be really key to finding out if your dog has switched their brain from, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, to, okay, yeah, I can pay attention to you. Smelling also decreases stress levels in your dogs and decreases their heart rate. So it's a really good way to let your dog get out some extra energy. It's both mentally and physically stimulating. So we definitely want to give our dogs plenty of opportunity to smell all the smells. There are just so many reasons that you want to let your dog explore their environment and smell everything that they can possibly smell because it does so much good for them. But once we let them do that, then we can switch over to training mode. Offering a treat to your dog and them actually being able to take it from you is going to be a really good indicator of, okay, I can pay attention to you. Now we can do some training. Let's continue the walk and do some training in our walk. And please be aware that every dog is different. So it can take weeks, months, or sometimes longer of practice for you and your dog to get really good at loose leash walking. So don't be deterred if it doesn't happen perfectly on the first try. One key that I really want to give you, especially for you pullers, is to have a harness that has both a front clip and a back clip and get a leash that will accommodate both the front and the back clip or just attach to the front while you're training. Because if you have really strong pullers, what you want to do is to, when they start to pull, as soon as they indicate they're going to start to pull, you want to turn around and go in another direction. So if your dog does start to pull and they have the leash attachment on their front of the harness, it's actually going to physically turn them around towards you instead of pulling towards what they're going for. That's another really key thing that you can use to aid you in training if you have a really strong puller. But anytime your dog starts to pull, when you're in training mode, just start turning around, go in a different direction. This is going to be key to letting your dog know that pulling doesn't get them what they want, but loose leash walking will. So once you're out on a walk and your dog is able to take a treat from you, that's the for me, the best indication that your dog has switched over from really, really super excited brain to, okay, I can pay attention to you brain. Now we just want to start asking for different cues. We want to do the same things we were doing inside of the house or in your driveway and ask your dog to heel right next to you and take a baby step and heel right next to you. And when they do, when they look up to you, when they heel and look up to you, you, you give them a treat. You reward that. This is the best way to let your dog know that this is the behavior you want to see out of them. Ask them for a look. That's another really great way to get your dog used to checking in with you while you're on a walk and reward when they do look at you. You can also just randomly reward your dog when you notice there is no tension on the leash because again, the best way to let our dogs know what we expect of them is to reward those behaviors that we want to see in our dogs. Now, if you are Walking up on something that maybe you know is going to distract your dog, a squirrel, another dog, a person, ask for a sit and stay and a look up at you and reward that. If you know your dog just is not in a position yet to be able to control themselves, go ahead and turn around and walk in another direction. We don't want to exceed your dog's threshold, especially right now. We want to start building up. Let's get to the point where we know your dog is still comfortable, can maybe acknowledge that there is something over there but hasn't reached their threshold to where they're pulling and barking, reward and turn around and go in another direction. We want to reward that calm just before they've reached their threshold and every time we do that we're going to let them get just a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer and reward that calm behavior before they ever reach their threshold, turn around and go in another direction and continue your walk, continue your training, continue your rewarding for good behavior because this is the very best way to teach your dog the behavior you do want to see in them on a walk. So that's gonna do it for this video. We are just gonna continue working with our dogs in real training session walks and make sure to always reward that good behavior, the behavior you want to see in your dog because that's the best way to get them to continue to provide that behavior to you. If you haven't already, 
check down there that subscribe button. If it's red, go ahead and click it, turn it gray. Once you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, if you haven't gone all the way through the beginner dog trainer series, why not? Click the link in the description, start from the beginning, work with your dog week after week, and you will see a huge difference in the bond between you and your dog. Also, don't forget to join the group. There are thousands of other pet parents waiting for you to join, including myself. Go ahead and join, share what's going on with you and your dog, why you came to the Beginner Dog Training Series, videos, why you joined the group. If you're having any issues that you need help with, let us know so we can help you. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Again, thank you so much for being here and I will see you in in the next video. Join me here next Wednesday for a continuation of the beginner dog training series. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.